Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But, but if, if we, we confess, confess our, our sins, sins God, God, who is faithful and, and just, will, will forgive, forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, 
Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, your desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. <laughs> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning, and though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The readings for the fourth Sunday in Lent fill us with a cause for joy. From the prophet Isaiah comes the song of joy in God who has become our Savior. In the epistle, we are reminded that in Christ we are a whole new creation. In the familiar parable of the prodigal son, or better named, the parable of the waiting father, we see the mercy of God that welcomes his wandering children back, forgives them of their sins, and restores them to be his own children again. The first lesson, the Old Testament reading for this day, the 12th chapter of the book of Isaiah. <clears throat> and in that day you will say, O Lord, I will praise you. Though you were angry with me, your anger is turned away, and you comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For Yah, the Lord, is my strength and song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And in that day you will say, Praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his deeds among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, O inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in your midst. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 32, be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, and whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groaning all the day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. For this cause, everyone who is godly shall pray to you in a time when you may be found. Surely in a flood of great waters they shall not come near him. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with bit and bridle, else they will not come near you. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord, mercy shall surround him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Our epistle reading is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning with verse 14. 
For the love of Christ compels us, because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best, best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this son was dead, this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you, and I have never transgressed your commandment at any time, and yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and is found. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. Let's confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, and in, and in Jesus Christ, Christ, His only Son, Son our Lord, Lord, who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose, rose again from, from the dead. He ascended into heaven, heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And before we sing our hymn of the day, I'd like to invite the children to come forward for the children's message. Good morning, Haley. Good morning, Joy. Yes, what do you see over there? You see a, a world, don't you? Yeah, a world that spins around. The world God created. So I'd like to sing a song called He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. You guys want to help me with that one? He's got the whole world in His hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. You know, God loves all people. And that's the message we just heard from our epistle reading, that God made peace with the whole world. He reconciled the whole world, and he's given us this great message to share. You know, last week, I talked about how God created the world, and he made it special by putting a little tilt on it, right? We got a little tilt there. So as the, as the world goes around, the sun, we have the different seasons. We celebrate the first day of spring, right? And um, the days get longer as we get closer to summer. God is faithful. He is faithful in all the seasons, in this Lenten season, all, always to be compassionate and merciful to us. And the sun sort of represents how the, how the world goes around the sun. I won't do it again. But what I wanted to talk about especially today is that, that this, this world includes many different people from many different countries, but God loves them all. He gave His Son, Jesus, for all people. And that's what this message of, of, the, of the epistle is, that He loves you and me. And I brought something that maybe will help us understand that. I wrote, brought a roll of paper towels. <laughs> I love paper towels because they clean up lots of messes. You ever spill a drink? Never? <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're a pretty good sipper then. I know we all make little messes here and there, and then we have to use the paper towels to clean them up. I like the strong ones that don't fall apart. And, and, and you know what? Uh, we can never have enough paper towels, but during the pandemic, we remember in the beginning, we couldn't find paper towels. It was so hard to get just, just one. And we were limited to one paper towel if you could find it. One per family. That was no fun. I don't like limits. Uh, some limits are okay, but... But this one was not good. But I just mentioned that because God doesn't put any limits on who he saved. God saved all people. There's paper towel for every person in the whole world to clean up the mess. And what's the mess that we have to clean up? Well, all our sins, right? All our sins. God cleaned it up. And he did it by shedding his son's blood for all of us. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> she found the button. <laughs> Good job. All right, so we cl he cleans up our mess, and, and he does it often, because we need his mercy and forgiveness always. He does that for you and for me, for all people, and so he makes us white again, washes our sins away. Yes, God loves you, Joy. God loves you, Haley, and he's got you in his hands, the whole world. All right, so go now in his peace. Jesus is always available. He's always to hear your prayer. Amen. <laughs>
his heart would still refuse thee, and thy grace not chosen be. Thou hast from thought sin that stained me, washed and cleansed and set me free. Grace to you and mercy be from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text this, for this fourth Sunday in Lent is from our epistle reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Here ends our text. In the hymn that we just sang, we, we sang, It was grace in Christ that has called me, taught my darkened heart and mind, else the world had yet enthralled me. To thy heavenly glories blind. What is it that gets the world excited, enthralls the world? What is it that gets you enthusiastic in life? You know, what is it that you really look forward to, you really anticipate? For some, it might be eating out in a nice restaurant or going to a premiere movie that you really have been waiting to see or a concert, traveling or spending time with family. There are so many blessings from God. All these, all these are things that are good and we look forward to them. Many things that we enjoy in this life and we enjoy them because God has given to us the most enjoyable thing, the greatest gift, life in Christ. He has reconciled himself to us through Christ. Yes, for some people, this is the most exciting time of the year. And nothing wrong with that. It's March Madness, right? <laughs> Maybe you still got a team in, in the college playoffs, the basketball playoffs, to find out who is the best of the best, you know, the the Sweet 16 was whittled down to the Elite Eight this weekend, and then it'll get to the Final Four, and then finally the, a champion will be crowned. Some people participate in this vicariously. If you participate in a pool and have your bracket picked, and if you get closest to the winner, and well, you, you get the prize. Only one person wins the prize. Yeah, it's tough sometimes because you get those unknown teams like St. Peter's that sort of just throw a monkey wrench into everything. <laughs> Upset old Purdue this weekend. Well, if that's not your thing, March Madness, our epistle reading truly has what is the most exciting, heart-pumping, jump-up-and-down news anyone could ever hope for. In fact, it's 
the verse that we read right at the beginning of our text, uh, of our, our epistle reading. Paul says that he's beside himself. And right before our epistle, he says he's, he can't control himself. He's going crazy, loco. He's going bonkers with the good news. He can't keep it to himself. He's got to share it. It's become his life's work. Paul says in verse 13, right before our text, if we, if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. Or if we are of a sound mind, it is for you. Paul's passionate about the message he has received from God. It changed his life, a complete 180. It made him a new creation. It changed him from a persecutor of the church of Christ to, his, to an ambassador, to the strong ambassador that God made him. It made Paul want to share this good news. He was on fire for the Corinthians with a sound mind. He wanted them to know what he knows, to be sure of. And he wants us to know this. Very simply, that for the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. This is what motivated Paul. Pushed him, compelled him. Not his love or anyone else's love, but God's love compelled him. And that love that he showed in Christ, that Christ died for all. What does that mean? This is amazing. Something so, so amazing, it convinced Paul. He says, we judge thus. Christ died for all. The one, Jesus Christ, did die. As we have been hearing, hearing in the season of Lent, and we hear anew each Sunday and each Wednesday that this amazing event, Christ's death on the cross, was not just for some people, but for all people. He died for all. Here in this chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians, you read the verses of the Bible that most beautifully explain the universal atonement. Christ died for all. There's not one person that has lived, is living, or will still live that Christ did not die for. That includes you, and that includes me. Paul is speaking about the one thing that gets every Christian excited every day, that Christ died in our behalf. To make sure that you know how important this is, he adds, then you all died. Then all died. That doesn't sound very good, but it is good because we're, de we're already dead. Christ died our death for us. His death was our death. He took our place. We're all, our, our death, our eternal death has already been accomplished. Again, it's for all people. This is the best news. Christ did this for all people, not just a, a privileged few. For some who unfortunately follow the teachings of John Calvin, this news just can't be true. It's too good to be true. So you know what was developed? This little acronym, TULIP. Maybe you've heard it before. It stands for total depravity, the T, unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, and perseverance of the saints. So let me digress for a moment on these five points of which the Lutherans can basically only agree on the first one, total depravity. We, we confess that we are all sinners by nature. Yes, Lutherans believe in predestination, unconditional election. That's the second one. It is the most comforting teaching in the Bible for a Christian to know that God foreknew us, planned our salvation in time, called us, justified us, made us His children, His firstborn among the brethren, as we know from Romans chapter 8, 29 30. But here, there's a huge difference. For the Lutherans, unlike the Calvinists, believe that there's just a predestination of the elect, not a double predestination that God purposely damned some. No, we don't believe that. The Bible doesn't teach that. John Calvin wrote, whom God passes by, he reprobates, and that for no other cause but because he is pleased to exclude them from the inheritance which he predestined to his children. He is pleased God to exclude some? No, that's not biblical. According to, God, to Calvin, God predestines some to heaven and predestines some to hell. Some to hell. We answer, of course, no. 
Sinful man condemns himself to hell. When he rejects God's offer of forgiveness that he won for all, God does not predestine us to hell. The prodigal son, in our gospel reading, returned to his father, not expecting mercy. He just wanted to be a servant. But he didn't know what the father had planned for him. He was looking for, for just a good meal, and the father offered him an embrace, a kiss, forgiveness, total forgiveness, a party, and it went on and on, dancing, and a fatted calf, and a ring, and a robe. Could the son have rejected such love? Of course. It's not irresistible grace. We don't believe in that either. He could have gone back to feeding the pigs and wanting to eat the pigs' food. He would have been a fool. Some people are fools in this life when they reject God's mercy, the hand that he offers to him of his love for them in Christ. And that's why this tulip teaching continues to go astray with the letter I because, of course, grace is not irresistible. Some people do resist it. And the L for atonement is not limited. That's what the Calvinists had to sort of invent because they had to figure out some way to, to explain why some are saved and some aren't. The Lutherans just say, we don't understand. <laughs> we believe, we just trust in God's will. We don't have to explain everything. All right, so, the, so it's not limited. We can, we can have as many paper towels to clean up all our messes as, as we need, right? There's some good limits in life. There's speed limits, there's term limits, but there's no limit on God's grace and His universal atonement for all people. In the March Madness, there's only one team that wins the victory, right? The champion, only one person wins the, the pool of all the money. No, not in salvation. There's more than one winner. God has paid the sins for all people, and all people who receive this good news in Christ become new creations and receive forgiveness. The gift is there for all. Paul says, be reconciled. Be reconciled. It's coming. It's for you also. This is what compels Paul to, to, to serve the Lord with all his heart. The love that, it, that he was shown to him, who was an enemy of Christ. He was part of the universal atonement. God removed his sin. And with absolute certainty, certainty he, he showed Paul that his love for, is for the Jews and for the Gentiles and for all people. You know, Tulip, I have to digress again, just a little moment in my personal life, drove me to become a pastor in the, in the Missouri Synod, LCMS. Tulip, something I hadn't heard about in confirmation. I was confirmed to the youth in confirmation. And I gave a testimony of my faith before the congregation, like many youth do. And then I went on to college as a pre-med student. And happy to do that. It's this great college that... I had a very high placement right into med school. That was my goal. Then I was rudely awakened. In college, I, I had discovered that not, not all Christians believe the same way. <laughs> I was sort of living a, a naive life. Not all Christians believe the same. And I was, I was sort of assaulted and sort of had to defend the teaching of universal atonement of all things. But that made me stronger in my faith. That made me want to not just help people in their physical needs, which is a good thing to do, but also, but most importantly, help people know that there is a love of God for all people, the universal atonement. All things are from God. All things have been done by God. He's done it all. Where a person says that it's not all done by God, that it's limited, that man has to sort of determine if, he, if he's the one or not by the works that he does. That's where doubt enters. That's where uncertainty enters. And that's where that, that, that doubt and that certain uncertainty was, was plaguing me as a college student. I needed to know, be firm in my faith, that God's love is for all people. That included me. He didn't destine some to be to hell. No, he loves all people. All things are from God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation.
This includes you and me, the ministry of reconciliation, the good news that we have received and now which we share. God has done it all. We did nothing. He was our enemy, but now he has reconciled us to himself. So now we are no longer enemies. And not only that, but he has done it all by giving to us this ministry of reconciliation. This, this word of reconciliation, Paul goes on to explain in the very next verse, he has committed to us the good news of which the Gideons share, of which you share in your personal lives, of which, which Paul shared and which the Corinthians shared, and which, which God calls pastors to share on a full-time basis. This message that in Christ God reconciled, made peace with the whole world, unlimited atonement. He's removed the enmity of sin. He has not counted their transgressions against them. He has not imputed their transgressions to them. Where'd they go? He imputed them to Christ. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. He who did not experience sin, never knew what sin felt like, felt it all on the cross. He made him sin. This was the big exchange. Our sin to Christ, his righteousness to us. This is what excited Paul. This is what compelled him to, to share this love of God for all people. He wants all people to receive this great exchange. It's been done for all, now just receive it. Be reconciled to Christ. That's what he pleads. He pleads through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. Receive this gift. We don't know who's been predestined to go to heaven. We don't have omniscience that God has. But we know that God wants all to be saved, so we carry on his ministry to as many people as possible, to all people. Anyone in, in Christ is a new creation, Paul says. In Christ, who has received and believed by the power of the Holy Spirit, and the old things have passed away, and the new has be, and all things have become new. Anyone. No limits. Doesn't matter who you are, what is your social standing, your influence in life, doesn't matter your race, your gender, your 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 language, your country. Anyone. That's the message for all people. There are no limits. God offers this new life in Christ. The old life of sin, death, and the devil has passed away. The new things of righteousness, life in Christ, and eternal life in heaven are ours. Again, how is this all possible? It all starts with the universal atonement. That's where it all begins. It makes us different in Christ, completely new. So with this new life, Paul says things do change a bit, don't they? He says, He who died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. That's the new life. We're no longer living for ourselves, but for others, for Christ. We live to share the good news of Jesus because the world is a mission field of lost people, just like the prodigal son who need to hear this news before it's too late. Paul says, therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him not, thus no longer. And so, neither do we. We know no one according to the flesh. All people are mission prospects in God's eyes. All, he died for all people. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us and given us this ministry of reconciliation. He has done all things through Christ, He's done all things to get the word out of this ministry of reconciliation through you and through me. Each of us is part of this to take the message to the lost. Each of us is an ambassador, a person who God has called into the faith now to be a light of Christ. We are his hands, his feet, his word that we share, his embrace, his kiss of reconciliation. This is the greatest thing, isn't it? we get to welcome the lost prodigal son and daughter back into his kingdom and share the good news that Christ loves you too. He died for you. If this doesn't make your heart pump a little faster, get you a little more excited, well, just remember again Paul's words, Christ died for all. And then all died.
Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasseth all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. As prodigals, we come into the arms of our Heavenly Father, waiting even more for us to pray than we are to petition His mercy. Heavenly Father, we have all been one with Adam in the rebellion of our stubborn wills and in suffering the consequences of sin with its death. Grant us grace that we may return to you with humble hearts and rejoice in your forgiveness so that our hearts may be at peace and we may be rescued from our guilt, shame, and despair. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Blessed Lord, in baptism you made us anew, raising up from the water a new person, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Give us the will and the desire to do what is good, right, and pleasing in your sight. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Mighty God, deliver the nations from violence and war, especially we pray for those in Ukraine. And teach us generosity, compassion, and the peace, path of peace. Bless our President, Congress, Governor, Legislator, Lature, and all who make it administer and judge your laws. Bless all those who labor for peace and justice, even at the peril of their own lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful God, deliver us from rebellion and bitterness, that we not only find a home in your mercy, but show forth your grace, forgiveness, and joy to all those around us. Bless the missionary and church planner as they bring your saving word to those who have not heard it and plant congregations for your people to gather around your word and table. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Compassionate Father, you know our needs even before we ask, but we still cry to you on, our be on the behalf of all the sick and all those who suffer. Especially we commend to your care, Gail and Bob and Loretta. We pray for Jesus, and we pray also for Irline and Mildred and, and for Harriet. We ask that you continue to give strength to, to Suzanne, we pray that you give them healing in accordance with your will, grace to endure their affliction, and peace in the hour of death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O blessed Lord, your mercies are daily new, and with, with fresh goodness you replenish the earth. Give us wisdom to use well all your resources, and grant us giving hearts that we share with those in need all that you have given in abundance. Receive also those tithes and offerings, signs of our faith, and symbols of our thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. O Lord, remembering the faithful who have gone before us, we ask you to keep us by your grace through the days to come, that we not be lost to you again, but kept in faith and now until the day of the resurrection of the dead, when we shall join the saints in glory in your presence forevermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his favor upon you and give you peace. Amen. The gospel shows the Father's face who sent his Son to save our race proclaims how Jesus lived and died that we might thus be justified it says the Lamb before our eyes who made the atoning sacrifice and caused the souls with guilt oppressed to come and find eternal rest. It brings the Savior's righteousness to robe our souls in royal Oh, uh-huh. 